Welcome to Automation with Ansible. So friends, in this lecture, we'll understand the Ansible concepts and its architecture. You can see in the PPT, there is one server that would be your jump server or you can say the control node. Control node on which you are going to install the Ansible software. So in your environment, there would be one server on which you are going to install the Ansible packages, bash, shell and Python. So these are the requirements for the Ansible or control node. And all your clients, it could be Linux, HP Unix, Solaris, Jet Linux, Winter. That would be your managed host. There should be a proper communication. That is your SSH should be enabled between your control node to your managed host. Here managed host are your clients. And control node are your Ansible server. It's very simple. SSH should be enabled. If a SSH is not working between control to manage host, your Ansible will not work. If there is a firewall between them, so you need to talk to the respective team to make it open. The port 22 should be open. Communication between Ansible server with managed host. Via SSH, the communication will be established. But which user? A normal user would enough to establish a communication between control and managed host. And one more feature of Ansible, normal user would be enough to perform the various tasks, but few tasks like user administration, password reset, in which we need some administrative privileges. Then Ansible provides a feature which can be used to elevate the privilege from normal to root user using sudo access. So this is one of the good feature of Ansible. We can use sudo feature which can elevate your privilege wherever it requires. The communication would be established using normal user. Let's understand this picture. This is you can say the complete architecture detail of the Ansible. As you can see in the diagram the Ansible automation engine has a direct interaction with the users who write playbooks to execute the Ansible automation engine. It also interacts with cloud services. You can see public and private cloud. Basically, it's a configuration management database, CMDB. Okay, and also at Ansible automation engine consists of various components like inventories, inventories, Ansible are the list of the host or nodes along with their IP address. It is basically those servers which you are going to control from your Ansible server. So you have to maintain a file, your inventory file in which you will keep the IP address or name of the servers of your managed host. API you can see, API is basically in Ansible are used as transport for cloud services, public or private. Modules, Ansible is come up with a lot of ready-made modules which can be used to automate various tasks. So modules are executed directly on remote host through playbooks. So you have to write the modules and in the modules you have to write the playbooks and in the playbook you have to mention various modules as per the requirement. So what will happen once you will execute the playbooks, those modules will execute on your remote host and you will get the desired output. Plugins. Plugins basically it enhance the feature of your Ansible. So plugins allow to execute Ansible task as a job build step. And plugins is basically it's a piece of code that augment Ansible's course functionality. Okay. There are few more components in Ansible architecture like networking. Ansible can also be used to automate different network as well. Ansible uses the simple powerful and agentless automation framework and with the help of this we can use Ansible or span on different network and hardware as well. Host, the host in the Ansible architecture are just node systems that are getting automated by Ansible. These are your managed host you can say, your the clients you can say. Playbooks, playbooks are simple files written in YAML format which describes the task to be executed by Ansible. So users are going to create the playbooks as per their requirement. 
Playbooks can declare configurations, but they can also orchestrate the steps of any manual ordered process. So this is what we can do with the playbooks. So friend, that's all for this lecture. Hope you got an idea how we can set up an Ansible and what is its architecture. And no worries, we'll have a lab session in which I will show you how you can set up an Ansible all about. Okay friends, that's all. Thanks for watching. And if you have time, please join with me in the next lecture.